Hi everyone, Titus here for another post-process special effect video, the classic smoke grenade. In this video, I'll show you how to create a smoke system that triggers a visual blur on the heads-up display. Alright, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so if you follow along from the previous video series, we, um, we created basically uh, several different grenades, like a chaff grenade, uh, flashbang grenade, so this will be the last one in the series, I think, uh, just for the smoke effect. Uh, let's go ahead and set up our project, uh, get the folders going. Uh, so in the first person um, starter template, I'm going to create it uh, four folders. So control shift N and we'll do audio. And then I'm also going to do blueprints. And then I'll also do materials. Oops. Underscore materials. And then VFX or SFX, however you want to title it. And then real quick for the audio, um, I downloaded some assets from freesound.org. Uh, basically just some gas leak audio and then some gas mass breathing. So nothing too crazy. And we'll be setting those up a little bit later. So like that. Those sort of sounds right there. Pretty simple. All right, and I think for this one, um, I know in the other series we worked on the uh, the object first, the grenade, and then the other one I think we worked on the uh, the visual effect first. Uh, in this one, I'm actually going to work on the post process first, so we'll start there. Um, so in our materials folder, uh, we need a way to be able to turn the blur on and off. Um, so to do that, we use a materials parameter collection. So you just right click. And then under materials, do materials parameter collection. I'm going to call it PC underscore and then uh, data set. And then we can open this up and I'll dock it in our project. Uh, the data set's pretty simple. We're just going to add one scalar parameter. So we'll click the little plus sign. And then on the index, I'm going to change the default value name of scalar to um, just alpha and I'm gonna leave it set to zero and then save that and that's pretty much it so now we're gonna go back to our content folder we're gonna create another material this will just be a regular material but we'll title it post process or PP underscore smoke um, then we can just go into the actual file and we have to change it from a surface material domain to a post process. And then I like to come to the bottom and switch blendable uh, from after tone mapping to before tone mapping. And then that's pretty much it for the uh, pre setup. Now we can uh, begin building the effect. Uh, I'm going to layer a few different effects on to get the, um, the smoked uh, just right. We're going to start with kind of like a heat wave. So think of like uh, if you ever, I guess, been out on a hot day or you looked at a game where you're in like the desert and you see the little like heat waves. Um, we'll kind of mess around with that and do some after images. Uh, to get that effect, we can right click and do a text coordinate. So this one texture coordinate. And then we can press P and then click on the graph to get a panner. Uh, we can hook our texture coordinate into the panner directly. And then we can come back and get a, um, a water normal. So under the starter content, if we press control space bar, go to your engine folder. If you don't see your engine folder, go to settings and then make sure show engine content and show developer content are checked. Then when you go into the engine folder, you can simply go to your filters um, right here and then just check textures. That's pretty much all we're going to be working with anyways. And I think if you scroll to the bottom, there's a one that's water underscore N, that one right there. We only need the normal, so we can actually grab that one. And we can plug in our panner into that. We then have to come into a mask because we can't use all three values because we're going from a two component vector to a three, so uh, we have to mask it out. So you can choose component mask. And then red-green 
uh, checked. We'll leave blue unchecked. And then we'll go into a multiply node. And now we need a scalar node. Um, to get a scalar node, you can just simply hold S on your keyboard and then click on the graph and you get this little um, node come up. And you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine um, distortion. Plug that into here. I'm gonna start with um, a value of 0 0.01. And then I'm gonna hold A and click into the graph to get an add node. Plug this into the B channel. I'm gonna drag off the texture coordinate into the A channel. And then I'm going to right click and do a scene texture. This is a pretty common one that we're gonna be going into a lot. The default is color. That's not what we want. We want a post-process input zero. Drag into there. And then when we come out the color, we're gonna to need to mask that again. So do a component mask. And this time we need to make sure red, green, blue is checked. And then from here, we can drag into the emissive color. And then that completes our heat wave. So we can actually select everything there, comment it out, and just call it heat wave. And then maybe drag it back a bit. And you can see in our effect, um, oops, you can see kind of the distortion there. Now for the, um, the panner, that's your, like your dilation. So on the Y value, I'm gonna give a real small 0.1. And then you can kind of see the effect is a little more pronounced that way. And then you can play with your distortion values. Like say I do a 0.1 instead of 0.1. You can see it looks a little bit more like water. Um, or you can get real crazy, put like a value of one, or even a value of 10. And you can get all these cool, really interesting effects, depending on what you're going for. Um, but I think for this one, I think a 0.1 for the panner, and a 0 0.01 for the distortion looks just right. Just subtle enough. We'll add this with our after effects. So we're gonna do like multiple images and I, I think it looks pretty good. Um, so to get the after images, we'll move on to the, uh, the next part uh, in our graph editor. Uh, we're gonna get a reference to time for this little node right here. And then we're going to get um, two multiply nodes. So hold M and you can click twice. And then we're gonna hold A and click to get an add node. And then we're gonna right click and do a search for sign. So we have all these nodes right here. So we have multiply, sign, add, multiply. So for time, we'll come into multiply. And then we'll plug that into sign. We'll plug that into the A channel of add. And then we'll come into the multiply again. And then we're gonna hold S and click in the graph to get another scalar value. This one's gonna be speed. Plug this in here. And I am going to press Q to center all these. And then for my multiply value down here, I'm actually going to use a 0.5. I'm then going to hold S and click in for another scalar value, but I'm gonna title it my offset. I'm gonna try a value of uh, point, oops, try point 0.5, I'm probably gonna mess with that. Uh, and then we'll do M and click in, oops. Do M and click on the graph to get a multiply node. And then we're going to hold L, click on the graph to get a lerp node. And then we're going to connect the offset into the B channel here. We're going to connect the multiply into the alpha. And this right here is going to be the movement 
of our after images. So we can actually select everything, comment, movement of after images. So this will be how we adjust like the speed values of um, some of the after images effects. I think for the speed, we'll do 0.2 starting off. I'm gonna mess with those in a bit though. All right, now to actually get some after images, um, we're gonna do scene textures just like we did before. Um, this one is also gonna default to color, so we need to change it to post-process input zero. And then we're going to duplicate that because I want I want three images, so two after images. So you duplicate these however many images you want, basically. Um, and then to make this work, we're just going to add an, an add node in here. And then we can connect the blurb into B. Drag this down here, like so. And then we'll come off our scene texture coordinate uh, down here and come into our add channel. I'm going to drag a little line down here. I think for this, I am going to comment these real quick while I got them. And we'll just call this after images. All right, so we'll plug in the add to the first scene texture. Then we'll come off this into a mask or component mask. And that's going to be a red, green, blue. And then we're going to hold A, click in here to get an add node. We'll connect this to B, we'll connect this to A, and then we'll connect the output pin to the emissive to replace that. And you can see we have the beginning of an after image. Now let's go down and see if we can figure out our offset. Let's try point zero. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So you can see the image is a little bit um, closer there. And then our speed point five. All right, let's see. Oh, this has to be, our multiply is set for one right here. Um, so that's basically in the position. So if we set it to like half, it's gonna move like that. And if we set it to negative um, one, so it's the value between one and negative one, and that's the distance that it shifts. So, you know, if I put it to one, it's not gonna move because it's in the, the full position. If I do a half, it's gonna go close to center. If I do negative 0.5, it's gonna go a little past. And if I do negative one, it's gonna go the full distance. So we'll set that multiply V value to negative one. And then your, your offset is the distance of how far it goes. So if I do like a one, you can see it goes real crazy. If I do 0.5, not as far, 0 0.05, it's real close. I think I settled on 0 0.09, somewhere around there. But you can play with that. Any of these values are changeable, of course. I think the speed's a little bit too quick, so I'm gonna bump it to 0.2. And then, yeah, I'm very happy with that, actually. All right. So we got two images. We want to get the third image or the second after image, as I call it. Um, to do that one, it's going to be pretty simple. Um, we're going to be using a breakout float uh, two component. And we're using a multiply node, so M, click in there. We're going to be using an add node. And then we're going to be using a make float uh, two. 
and there's a few ways to set this up. So um, I'll show you the first way. Uh, I'm gonna use the breakout float too. I'll plug that into the make float like this. The G value, I'm gonna go into A. The multiply is gonna go into B. And then the uh, output for the addition is gonna go on the Y channel to make float. And then this pin will go over here. And then we could comment this and call it the second image. Pull it right here. The alternate way to set it up, and I'll show you the difference. If we do a shift D to duplicate. Oops, that didn't work. Control D. Disconnect these pins. All right, so the other way is bring the addition node up here. And then we'll connect the red here, the green to the Y, the addition here, and then the multiply will actually go into the B channel right there. So it kind of look like this. And then I'm gonna comment this as an alternate setup for the second image. So this is kind of like optional. It's like whatever you like, uh, I guess, more for the effect that you're going for. Um, all right, so let's get this set up here. Um, the multiply node right here from our, um, oops, I don't know why that dragged out. Uh, from our movement code, we can drag off this pin and this is gonna to go to the A channel right there. And then our multiply, um, instead of one, we'll do maybe 0.3. And then for the break float, that's actually gonna connect up to our original texture coordinate. So we can grab this pin here. And we can drag off that and make another node just like that. Maybe just bring that down there. All right, and then to actually get it set up over here, um, we're gonna be doing kind of more of the same. So we'll drag off the uh, scene texture and we'll do a mask. And this will be red, green, blue again. And then we're gonna do another um, addition. This time this add will go up here. And then what you'll want to do is you could try dragging into the emissive color. I think it's gonna look a little weird. It's kind of all right. Um, because we're, we're kind of, we keep adding different nodes, you may want to drag off into a uh, divide node. I think if you hold D and click, yeah, you can get a divide node there. So you can plug this into A, divide by three, so we have three images. And then drag this in here. There you go, looks a little bit better. And you get this kind of uh, effect right here, kind of like a drunken effect. Now real quick, just to show you the alternate setup, uh, I can come over here and hold control, and grab this node, and move it over there. And then for the, um, the multiply, same thing. I can grab this, drag it over here, and switch just the point three. And then I'm just gonna connect the float here. And this is a little bit of a different orientation of the blur effect or the after image effect, I guess whatever you're kind of going for. So, you know, kind of play around with the, uh, I guess the orientation of uh, your nodes and you'll get very different effects. So I'm gonna switch it back. So I'm gonna 
control click this one, plug it over here. Control click this one, plug that over there. And then just hook up this node into there. And I'm okay with that. All right. Now the other thing we'll want to do just to add a little bit of uh, uh, additional detail is I like to darken the border. Uh, so we can do that with a texture node uh, in the engine content, control space. There is um, a nice texture I found that's kind of reversed, but we can make use of it. I think it's gizmo something, gizmo texture, this one. So we can drag this one out and it's black in the center and white. So I need the opposite of that uh, to invert it. I can just come off, uh, I'm gonna use just the red channel. So I come off the red channel and just do one minus. And then do M for a multiply node. Click on the graph, hook that to B. And then after the divide, we can come over here into the A channel. And then if you look at the perimeter, we'll drag this to the emissive color. And you should see that little darken effect. And that'll really, just a little minor touch that can add to it. Then we can just comment this and do border darken. Pretty simple. Now, we can't really use this effect uh, in code yet. So this is basically a static effect. It would always um, trigger on. So we basically need to set up in the uh, material a way to control that with the parameter collection we set earlier. Uh, to do that, um, it's not too complicated. Uh, we're just going to be using the scene texture node again. So if we right click and do scene texture, this is the same one we've been using. Remember it defaults into scene color. We change that to post process input zero. We have to come out into a component mask. We're going to be using the red, green, blue channel. We will hold L and click on the graph to add a lerp node. We'll plug in our lerp into the alpha. And then off our multiply, we'll come into the B channel. And then we'll simply right click and search for a collection parameter. And once you have the collection parameter selected, you can tell it to use our material data set. And this one is my demo, so beat this one. You should only have one. And then for the parameter name, that's whatever you named it in the actual data set right here. So I can plug that into the alpha now. And I am going to comment this out as my toggle switch. And now for the um, lerp node, look this into the emissive color and you'll notice the effect is gone. Now the effect is gone because our material data sets value is set to zero. If we set this to one, the effect will be full. So you can see it right there. Versus if we come over here and set it to zero and then save, the effect will be gone. So we're gonna be able to adjust this value in the blueprint, and that's gonna be how we turn the effect on and off through code. So that's why we needed to set that up earlier. So I hope that made sense. All right, good people, we'll cut it here to keep the video short. Uh, in the next one, we'll create the Niagara system to spawn the actual smoke texture that we'll create uh, separately from Unreal Engine. As always, thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and see you on the next one.